2005, New York resident Don Henry purchased 77 South Union Street for nearly $1.7 million. This location has been the focal point for much crime in the District F area. The Lawrence City Council Housing Committee met to discuss not only the crime, but also the condition of this property. 77 South Union Street is a, a rooming house, a boarding house. So the conditions where people are living are, are substandard. I'm just gonna lay out the problems, number one. Number two, we've also had some issues in the past regarding the water department. Mm -hmm. um, not being able to have the water uh, bills paid in a timely manner. Drug traffic, prostitution traffic, crime traffic that seems to be rearing its ugly head in that corridor on South Union Street and it's impacting the quality of life of the neighbors uh, that live in that surrounding area. Because the property on is it 525 Common Street, the other property, the other yes. rooming boarding house, Yes. Uh, when that when that went defunct, mm -hmm. we only had essentially one other major, maybe some other ones, but this was a major one. So all of a sudden, a lot of folks came to 77 South Union, uh, and now we've got issues with guarding people who were staying in the common, uh, staying in the gazebo over there, mattresses, et cetera. So you're, we're talking about some social issues, some economic issues, some um, municipal issues, and they're all wrapped up in, in what's going on right there. The conditions of the Ray Hillman from Lawrence's Inspectional Services Department. When um, Don Henry owned both buildings, he was an absentee landlord from New York. Uh, he had an inadequate management team in each of the buildings. Uh, they wasn't paying the bills properly. And what happened is that when you have an absentee landlord, the property starts to decline. Before the receiver Captain spoke, Bob Wilson from the Lawrence Fire Department. Response times, as opposed to the receiver there now. In contrast, do you have any kind of senses of what that would look like? Um, we were averaging We've gone there probably a little over 80 times in the year, so somewhere around eight or nine a, a month. Over the last two Sergeant years, Sergeant Jay Cirillo, Lawrence Police Department. 355 incidents at this location, ranging from trespasses to domestic violence to unwanted guests to larcenies to gun calls, you name it, it's been over there. What were they doing to the Alan Hope, destroying, the court-appointed receiver. Vandalizing the property, throwing glue down the toilet, having needles in the, uh, in the, in the, the tubs, in the, um, in the sinks. Um, drug dealings were taking place, even after we moved the fire escape that prevented people from coming up into the building. And I myself get calls from the fire department, I get calls from the police department, with their concerns, they do raids there. There's prostitution. Dr. Joel Gorn, issues. Chairman, um, Lawrence Board of Health. You get calls from your constituents concerned about this property because it, it's definitely a behemoth of a property in South Lawrence. It has always been. Both that property and Common Street have always had major, major issues. And this city, unfortunately, has a lot of rooming houses which attract people that are really kind of at the end of the line that are either in drug rehab or working on, you know, the bare minimum. And the more we close, I mean, we certainly can, you know, these people will probably find other places to live, other rooming houses, but, I mean, the, the, the options for them are limited. As a chairman of the Board of Health, I've been st sticking my neck out, and the city is also sticking its neck out by maintaining this place uh, in operation. Um, if there were ever a fire, there were ever a major incident, um, there, were a lot, there will be a lot of questions asked. This place is operating without a permit. The fire protection is inadequate. The sprinkler system doesn't have enough pressure. Um, these are, these are wow. issues that will take an enormous amount of resources and time to bring up to the standard that you or I would think would be adequate. The court appointed me as receiver, and that's my obligation to the court, which we do, which we report to them twice a month and the judge certainly has recommendations to make. I would welcome any recommendations that the council would have, as other members of the audience would have as well, because that's part of my responsibility, is to bring this, this property not only up to code, but seeing that it's part of the social fabric of what we're trying to establish there. My responsibility to the court is to bring it up to code. Okay. What happens after that is a decision between the owner and the bank and the court. Gotcha. 
so that you're not a you, you are not the seller, the court. No, I don't even own the, the property. As you know, the city has a first lien for any taxes, water, and anything that's past due. I only have a second lien after the city on the property. I do not own the property. When we were in court to uh, have a receiver appointed, all these uh, oppositions uh, came against Mr. Hope and his uh, team. Well, he finally uh, got possession of the building. Uh, since then, he's um, did 22 out of 26 evictions. Uh, four more evictions are coming next week. Uh, he has all the fire raised doors on the exterior completed. Um, he has a uh, permanent uh, management team in place and per permanent security team in place. Uh, he, he's in the progress of uh, getting finance so he can complete the rest of the jobs. And on the housing court issue, uh, we meet at least twice a month on that particular property. And he has to report back to uh, the city and Judge Kerman about the conditions and the progress we have made. And uh, we also made surprise inspections. Um, one day I called them up, so they were here. There was the fire department, myself, the building inspector, the commissioner, and we walked through the building. We did that uh, more than once, so we do monitor the building. Is this a building that we want to condemn? You'll have another boarded up property in the city of Lawrence. The time it will take to get this property to get the housing court or, or probate court to put it up for auction, for someone to come in and renovate this building that is really willing to put the resources into a building in South Union Street. I mean, the most likely scenario if this building is condemned is that it will remain boarded up for a long time. It will be another scar in the downtown of Lawrence. So my calculated um, decision was based on the fact that I thought that maybe with some time, with Mr. Hope's um, due diligence that, you know, doing his evictions and keeping the tenants that really were committed to living there, paying their rent, that little by little we could work towards a building that would, you know, not only meet the fire and, and fire protection code, but also qualify for a building permit, I mean, a, a rooming house license. People mostly that are there now are good people. They take pride in what they have, although it's only one room. They take pride in what they've got, and they are over there to protect it and make sure that there is sa there's safety in the building. My name is Rowan Finning. I reside at 77 South Union Street, sure. and I do a lot of things for this building, hoping to upgrade it and upgrade the reputation. Yep. I do cleaning in here, hallways, back stairs, bathrooms, toilets, front stairs. I do office work. I do security. I'm trying to better the tenants and the building and the reputation and the better living for everybody in here. You said how long have you been here now? I've been here four years. Four years. And has it been improved at all? Oh, yes. Compared to what it was like, yes. When I first moved here, there were shooting, stabbing, people shooting up their veins in the hallways, smoking obscene substances. Yeah. No longer anymore, thank goodness.